and soon uh, Peter, our friend from IFU Slovenia, will come and pick it up to take us to Ljubljana, which surely will be another nice surprise. Thanks to Peter from Biking and Hiking Tour and I Feel Slovenia, we arrived in Ljubljana. We were straight away in love with the city and we couldn't wait to start exploring around. The first thing we did was a free walking tour, which is not exactly free, but you can get more information on our website, themandifeelings.com. The walking tour is great to get good information about the city, which definitely makes your stay much more enjoyable. After that, we felt a lot more prepared to tell you more about this lovely city. Welcome to our cell. Here is where we spend our last two days in a prison cell in this former prison from the Austro Hungarian Empire from back at the time. So the prison has more than 100 years. It has been converted into a hostel in more or less the year of 2000. Um, so the concept here is quite interesting. It is also the oldest hostel in Ljubljana. Um, they tried to preserve the whole thing, they just made it like more artistic. So our room for example has been um, refurbished by three artists and each cell has its own artist and uh, design. Some are more interesting than the others. We had a chance to visit some different cells and I think ours is not the most interesting one. But still, it makes the job. I mean, you really feel you are, you are in a prison cell. Um, it's a bit claustrophobic, especially first time when you enter here, you realize like you have these uh, metal bars everywhere. Um, it's not the most comfortable room, not the most usual room as well, because you don't have hangers for the towels and many things. But it still, it's a very interesting environment. And uh, but we, what we loved the most were like the staff of the hostel and also the location. So uh, we are in the heart of the, this artistic neighborhood called Milubiana, Metokleana, Chi? Metoko. <laughs> okay, that thing the Tiago said. We're in the heart of this neighborhood, which is um, the artistic heart of Ljubljana. The whole place is full of graffiti, galleries, artists uh, and it's really interesting and the whole story is part of that as well, of the history of this place. Metelkova is an autonomous social centre and the former headquarters of the Yugoslav National Army. It was squatted by independent artists in 1993 and today you'll find many activities over there such as galleries, bars, studios, space for designers, cultural organizations and many 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 concerts. Needless to say we loved staying in there. No, then we went on exploring the city with our bikes. And we loved the fact that everybody rides bikes over there. That way we didn't feel like the two crazy dudes on a bike, but like a normal citizen. Right, so we are the three bridges. That's pretty much the main point of Ljubljana. Uh, basically, this three bridge uh, wasn't always three. So they first did the 
the main one by wood back in the days, which is 1842. You can see the date over there. It resisted like an earthquake, a big earthquake, uh, all the, the heavy weights from cars, horses, and everything. So it was a strong bridge. They then changed it for a stone bridge, and then the traffic started increasing. And uh, they called the northern architect, and uh, so they they did a, like a like a something like a contest. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so they did a contest about uh, what to do with the traffic, with the increasing traffic in the city. And uh, the, the architect that won, he had this idea of leaving the bridge, the main bridge, and just did one on the right side, another one on the left side, very near to it, so pedestrians could use it. After a while, the mayor of Ljubljana decided that no cars are allowed in here anymore. Now you don't see more vehicles, which is nice. And at the beginning, this was wasn't very well accepted by locals, but uh, eventually it turned out to be the greatest idea of the mayor. Uh, Ljubljana now it's been the, it has won the greenest city of Europe and is still winning lots of um, awards. But therefore, tourism is always increasing in Slovenia. Then, just at one end of the Triple Bridge, we are at the Brescia Rainy Square. How many towns do you know that make a tribute to a poet on its main square instead of a general or someone else from the army? Yeah, that's actually the first time we see it too. So here in Ljubljana, instead of having a general army in, in their main square, we have Fasheren. Which is their most beloved poet. And uh, here you see a statue of him. On top of him you see a muse, which is where he gets all his inspirations. Inspiration, her muse, yeah. his muse. But he actually has a sad love story, like uh, he used to love this Juliet, a real Juliet, <laughs> but he's not Romeo. Yeah. Uh, but, but her love is Juliet, so that's kind of a good coincidence. But she never will re return his... Um, Love. His love, and uh, what when he died, what they did is like they built, they made a sculpture of Juliet just across him. So if you follow his eyes, you're gonna see Juliet just by the window looking at him as well. So he's like, always gazing his forever love, and interesting fact that the house is exactly where she used to live, Juliet. So this is a present the the country of Slovenia, the city of Ljubljana gave to. Uh, his favorite poet. The sculpture is located at a pressuring square. This is an important meeting point, gathering point for locals and it's a nice place to come just to look around and check the environment and feel how it is to be a truly Ljubljanian. <laughs> and it's just by the tree bridge so you can see like pretty much all at once. The tree bridge, for sharing, for sharing square and the little church where everybody meets in front of this church. So if you just uh, if you saw this bus, it's actually an amazing idea from the mayor. Uh, since cars cannot go through the city center of Ljubljana, they offer this bus for free for anyone, even tourists. Like you just have to give them a call, and they will come and pick you up and bring you to the market or to the shops, and they will give you a hand. Brilliant idea, seriously! Congratulations, Ljubljana. Right, so we are the Gobbler's Bridge. Another historical bridge in town. As you can see, it's a city full of bridges and all of them, besides being quite beautiful, they also have a story to tell. Yeah, this one was made by the sellers back in the days when they wanted to avoid paying tax. So if they established their markets in this side of the river, they wouldn't pay tax. And But that was difficult for people to come and go, so they created the bridge. So, sort of everything out for everybody. <laughs> and this is seeing the oldest shoemakers in town, just across the bridge. They're That's still why there. this bridge is also known as the Shoemakers, shoemakers bridge. bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And the other place you cannot miss when walking around this area is the oldest bar in town. Because Ljubljana is also known for good beers. Yes. They do have good beers. And if you go to the Golden Ship, don't miss the one that you tried. Yes, I tried Bovac and Union. Both of them really good. Also, they have one made by a couple of Australian people. They came Which down, they love it. Now, yeah. Uh, yeah, and now they they made it the human fish beer. Try it, you're not gonna and forget. And future. Fun fact about Ljubljana. Actually, it's Slovenia and Ljubljana. You know, Slovenia is the only country in the world that has love in its name. So it's Slovenia. And Ljubljana, in fact, means the beloved. So uh, it comes from Ljubljana, which means beloved. 
So it's definitely a, a lovely, lovely city. So here we are at the famous Dragon Bridge. One of the main sites here in Ljubljana because the dragon is actually the symbol of the city. Yeah, basically you see dragons everywhere. You see dragons on the Ljubljana flag, you see dragons on the, the beer labels. On the buses, on, on the cars, everywhere. And on the bridge, so basically. Where uh, it came from? Yeah, there are two basically legends why dragon is the city symbol. And one is because a long, long time ago, a couple of guys came here and then the when they arrived here, arrive here. Yeah, the first ones arrived to the place and when they arrived here they found a dragon and then they fought and they defeated the dragon. And even though the dragon was killed, it is still the seed symbol. Somehow. But there is a most believed legend that is more, more related to Christianity that has to do with St. George and the dragon. Like, you know, in the Bible it says that they fight. I don't know exactly the story, <laughs> but that's the most believed legend. So that's and why the dragon is the seed symbol of Ljubljana. And if you're gonna visit Ljubljana, this is a place you have to come, take a picture with the dragon and just wait to see him like around the city because you're gonna see it a lot and it's a nice symbol. Yeah, and an art is very beautiful as well because it gets really like, there's a green color underneath it. Green is this the is the color of Ljubljana, so it's get very, it gets very beautiful. But there's also an ur uh, urban legend about this bridge. It says that if a virgin crosses it, the dragon will waggle its, its tail. You know, but nobody has ever seen the dragon waggling the tail, so we don't know if the legend is false or if just there are no virgins. Yeah, it's stupid legend, whatever. It's just like, don't miss this bridge, okay? <laughs>